Welcome to another episode of Wood Gas Stove Science. Uh, this is Paint Can Stove Optimization Part 4. Uh, this is the results from last week's episode, uh, which was Part 3. Uh, and you can see um, it burning in the background. Uh, last week we worked on making a damper for the stoves to make it adjustable. And you can see here I just opened up the uh, damper and the flame immediately got bigger. Uh, we also put together a pot stand and a flame concentrator last week. Uh, the results were a little bit on the disappointing side where our boil time was around 8 minutes. Uh, with the optimized Vortex 5.4, I was able to boil water in 5 minutes, so that's what we're shooting for. Um, it seemed to me as though the, um, the flame concentrator didn't really add a whole bunch um, and actually might have might have hindered our burn. Uh, here I'm removing the flame concentrator and I'm putting the pot stand on upside down. Now you can see by the way the flames are pulling the air in through that pot stand uh, that it's actually starving for secondary air. Uh, so um, that's one of the things that I'm going to do. I'm going to increase the secondary air. Uh, but unfortunately what happened uh, this week was yesterday I did about six different experiments and, and unfortunately all of my um, files were not available when I took the camera back out. Uh, so I lost a whole bunch. So I'm going to kind of put the first four or five experiments together uh, in this first experiment that I'm showing here. Uh, now I started this experiment by removing the flame concentrator uh, and opening up the secondary air holes from 3 16 of an inch to a quarter of an inch. Um, and I also added a couple, um, actually eight little flaps um, on the pot stand. As you can see, they're little triangular flaps and they're bent in uh, to try to add a little bit of extra air at that pot stand and possibly help it with the vortex. Um, so here you can see that the boil time was about uh, six minutes and 40 seconds for the boil time, which was really good. That was over a minute's worth of um, reduction. So that was very good. Um, and the overall burn time was about 22, uh, about 23 minutes, um, 22 and a half minutes. Uh, you can see here that the, the flame was nice. Uh, the pot did have um, some tar buildup on the bottom of it, uh, which is not good. Um, so we'll work on that in a, in a little while with the next experiment. Uh, but you can see that we're, we're getting nice, powerful uh, jets now, much more powerful than they were before. The flame still does flicker, uh, so we have a few issues to take care of. Um, and that pot stand didn't seem to add a whole bunch uh, to the pots, uh, to the f to the flame. Uh, so here is experiment number two uh, that I did uh, yesterday, um, and I re-recorded it today. Um, so here's the pot stand. I um, made the pot stand taller. Um, I used the same eight openings at the top, and I added 16 um, holes around the bottom. And those holes are 5 16 of an inch in diameter, and they all have um, the angled hole, the vortex tweak to them. Uh, so, and they're all going exactly the same direction as the 16 secondary air holes. Um, now, here at five minutes, uh, just like on the last one, I added two cups of water for a boil test. And you can immediately see the flames licking out around the bottom of the pot. Um, which was good. That means the flames are much more powerful. Uh, and here's a closer look of the, the flames licking around the outside. Um, so <clears throat> you could see at about two minutes some tiny bubbles starting to form uh, in the, in the uh, water. With the strength of these flames coming out from underneath the pot, I knew that we were onto something good. And I had a pretty good suspicion that um, the uh, water was going to boil quite a bit quicker. Um, and here you can see that the boil time was just about six minutes. So again, we've made another nice, um, nice reduction in boil time. So we started off at around eight minutes and now we're down around six minutes. Um, now here you can see that the pot was just, just had some uh, soot on the bottom and it was actually pretty clean um, other than a little bit of soot right, right around those openings, those eight openings. Uh, and here you can see that those um, openings in the pot stand added considerably to the swirling vortex. Um, so that actually looks really, really nice. 
Um, so uh, here we can see that our overall burn time has reduced just a little bit down to about 22.5 minutes um, and that's still very good for one cup of uh, wood pellets. And there I'm showing you the stats of uh, this last experiment. Uh, so for the final experiment that I did uh, yesterday, which I recorded again today, um, you could you can see by uh, by looking through those uh, fresh air inlets that the primary air holes on the outside of the can were lined up with those. And I have a feeling that uh, that's what's called causing the pulsing of the flames. So what I did was I made a new um, inner can. Uh, and that inner can didn't have any holes around the outside, but it had this exact same number of primary air holes, and it had the exact same number of secondary air holes. Um, so everything was the same, except that there were no holes around the outside. There were no um, primary holes around the outside. Uh, so I started up this experiment exactly the same way. Splash of liquid heat in the yellow bottle, uh, one cup of wood pellets, um, and I waited five minutes for... Um, the fire to get going before I started a boil test. Now at five minutes, um, the flames looked really, really good on this. Uh, and immediately they started licking around the outside of the pot, just like they did the last time, um, which was fantastic. And at just about five and a half minutes, the water was boiling. Uh, and here again, another very good, strong um, reduction in boil time. So five and a half minutes is very respectable. And when I removed the pot, you can see the vortex is spinning around. And here again, the pot was even cleaner. Uh, there still was soot, uh, so we still have a little bit of work to do. But it was very, it was actually very shiny uh, most of the way around. Uh, so here you can see again the swirling vortex, um, very powerful jets coming out. Um, so this is very um, reminiscent of the. Vortex 5.4, except in a paint can. Uh, so I'm very happy with this. Uh, one of the things that I did notice was that I had to veer away from that 5 to 1 ratio, which is 5 parts primary air uh, to 1 part secondary air. And I actually had to go down to closer to 3 to 1, uh, which is really very odd. Uh, but I'm attributing that to the amount of clearance between the, the two cans. Uh, so here you can see that the third experiment is starting to burn down uh, and actually the burn time shortened up considerably on this which means it's burning much hotter uh, 20 minutes 20 20.5 minutes so roughly 20 and a half 21 minutes it did smoke for about 10 seconds after the flame went out um, which you know that can have a lot of different um, things like maybe the flame was blown out by a gust of wind before all of the wood gas was burnt up. Uh, but here is another view of um, my final experiment burning. Um, you've already seen this clip, but I'm just playing it again. So you can actually see how the, the flame is capped off the paralysis zone. The flame is nice and uh, stable. And even though there's, there's wind right now, um, that flame is stable. You can see the spinning uh, plumes of flame. So I'd like to thank you very much for joining me for part four uh, and sticking with me throughout this um, paint can um, series. So if anybody would like to see any other things done with this paint can uh, stove, let me know. Uh, but if not, over the next couple weeks, um, I will be just doing some videos on this, how I built it, um, and how, to, how I optimized it, and possibly I'll cook something on it uh, just for grins. Okay, well, thank you very much for joining me, um, and uh, goodbye.